Hey everyone, back tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the Soda Cycles today, Soda Cycle 24, uh, see what's going on with the uh, Soda Cycle, and then we're going to look at what this could mean uh, going forward. And we're going to have a look at the summer as well and compare it to past summers in very weak Soda Cycles. Um, before I get on with it all, though, I just want to talk about the advertising. There's green keyword ads on my pages at gaswebbiz.com. If you roll your cursor over those green keywords, they'll display ads. But if you click through the words, you'll go to the advertiser's website. And by doing that, you'll be supporting gaswebbiz.com. It allows me to sit here and uh, discuss all this with you. It allows me to do videos, um, present my thoughts and ideas and forecasts to you. Uh, so it's important, actually. It's, it is important. I hope you don't get too fed up with me uh, talking about it, but it's important for, that I uh, say this because, yes, that's what allows me to have a website and to be able to do all of this without the ads it wouldn't be possible so I know you've been clicking on the green ads thanks so much for doing that continue to do it you'll continue to support gaswebbiz.com and as I say you'll, that will allow me to uh, sit here and discuss all of this uh, with you uh, further into the future and thanks very much again for doing that so we're going to start off with uh, the uh, website solarham.net we're going to have a look at the solar disk today um, and sunspots well there aren't many of them there are a few we've got one uh, there one there a very small one a cluster there of pretty small ones and another one over there just four areas on the solar disk uh, on our side of the solar disk today are displaying sunspots it's a very uh, low uh, time for solar activity once again we had a bit of a peak as we went through the spring uh, when I did the first uh, solar cycle 24 video which went down the storm and I know you enjoyed it um, when I did that I said I thought we was getting a double peak in the solar cycle we may well have had it actually through April and May, that upwards trend that I talked about, because June and now July are going to very much be downwards uh, months in terms of the uh, train. So if we have had this uh, double peak in the solar cycle, it could be that now we're just on a downwards trajectory uh, into solar minimum, which is probably going to occur sometime in the next five or six years. But it may well be that, yeah, the uh, downwards trend has already started in what has been a really, really weak um, solar cycle. Certainly very uh, low solar activity uh, once again today uh, on the solar disk, that is absolutely certain. So if we go to uh, NASA, we can have a look at uh, the uh, predicted uh, sunspots uh, for cycle 24. This is the prediction from um, NASA, cycle 24 sun sunspot prediction as of July uh, 2013. So this is just updated uh, this month. And this is what uh, we're interested in, this area just here. This is, uh, I'll highlight it, this uh, area is uh, cycle 24. Um, so, uh, yep, we're going to have a look at that. I'll highlight it there. That is uh, cycle 24, the peak of cycle uh, 24, just there. Uh, this was cycle 23 over here. Very, very weak solar cycle, uh, just there. It peaked around the year 2000. Notice we did get double peak around uh, 2000, and then again around 2002, we had another uh, double peak. Uh, despite the fact we went down, we went back up again, and then we dropped down into the solar minimum. We went through that long, long solar minimum uh, through here, which uh, ended, there is some controversy about when the solar minimum of cycle 23 ended, actually. Uh, officially, it's December 2008, but because it's such a long minimum and the ramp up to cycle 24 uh, was so slow, there is a bit of uh, controversy really about when uh, cycle 23 did actually end but anyway we are well and truly into cycle 24 now and we're at the peak of top cycle uh, 24 just here now this is the first peak that occurred uh, around November December 2011 so I'll just clear that and highlight it again that was uh, the first peak then we drip dip back down dramatically through much of 2012 into the start of 2013 and then we got that next little peak occurring just here and that is the spring of uh, 2013 when I said I think having the double peak I think we did have a double peak um, but is the double peak over that's the question uh, we've got to ask ourselves now because look the white line is trending back down again we're going back towards uh, where we was in much of 2012 
uh, July. I don't think we've got a July number yet, but uh, that's just going to continue this uh, downwards trend in this white line. It does appear that the uh, double peak in the solar cycle could have occurred sometime around uh, April or May 2013. And if that's right, we may, I'll just emphasize the word may, uh, we may now be on a downwards trend into uh, cycle uh, the solar minimum of cycle uh, 24 and then on into um, cycle 25 which is uh, as I say predicted to occur the minimum of 24 and the start of cycle 25 predicted to occur somewhere you can't really see it with the colour there but somewhere around that area there uh, 2019 2020 in any case we're going to be well below cycle 23 I say that's the peak for cycle 23 just there we're going to be a long, long way behind um, uh, behind that to peak for cycle 23. It's going to be a really quiet uh, sunspot cycle. Now you've seen this chart before. Uh, this is uh, where cycle 24 uh, fits in uh, with all the other sunspot uh, cycles going back to 1749. Uh, so there's cycle 24 uh, just there. It's certainly going to be weaker than just about all of them uh, through the 20th century. You have to go back to these ones uh, back here which uh, start in the uh, early part of the 20th century and going through into the 19th century. Um, we're somewhere in comparison to these but uh, certainly uh, many of the cycles through the uh, middle and last part of the 20th century we're going to be well well uh, below those cycles and it's possible that uh, actually uh, we may come in somewhere around here uh, somewhere through the uh, middle part of the, uh, of the latter part, I should say, of the 1900s. Wanting to focus on solar cycles 5 and solar cycle 6, which are just over here. This uh, just here is in the Dalton minimum. This is solar cycle 5. It started in the year 1798 and ended in uh, the year uh, 1810. This is a uh, solar cycle 6 just here, which is uh, just as weak really as a solar cycle um, 5. Uh, solar cycle 6 is just as weak. Notice also, solar cycle 5, despite the fact it was a very weak solar cycle, it did actually have a little bit of a double peak uh, there. And the second peak, and usually, uh, was a little bit above uh, the first peak. That's the first peak just there. That's the second peak. Uh, just there, the second peak of cycle 5 um, was a little bit above uh, the first peak, but it was a very, very weak uh, solar cycle, so cycle 5, as was uh, solar cycle uh, 6. And in that time, we got a lot of very cold winters, but we got one extraordinarily uh, hot uh, July. We had a really hot July in uh, the year 1808, which was right in the middle of that uh, incredibly weak solar cycle in the Dalton minimum uh, solar cycle 5. I just want to have a look at the central England temperature for this year because it's turning into a very very strange year, very unusual year. This is the uh, central England temperature uh, for 2013. Been a really cold year. Every month up to June comes out with a negative anomaly. Of course the phenomenally cold March in uh, uh, 2013 which had a central in temperature of 2.7 a whole three degrees um below average but look what's happened as we've got into july we've had a really hot month coming in after all of those cold months uh when I'm doing this video on uh, Friday evening, the provisional central England temperature is 18.8, which is 2.8 uh, degrees above average. And that virtually wipes out the whole of uh, March. March, uh, uh, March is cold anomaly at 3 degrees. We've virtually wiped the whole of that out uh, with this July. So it's been a really, really hot month, um, despite the weak solar cycles, uh, which do favour... Uh, colder conditions, certainly in winter, but the evidence that the weak solar cycles do favour colder conditions, I think, block conditions. And despite the fact that that run of very cold months through 2013, we are having a very hot month. And is this uh, to be expected? Well, let's go and have a look at solar cycle uh, 5, uh, which I say starts in the year uh, 1898, which is uh, just there and it runs down to uh, 1810 so all of this uh, all of this here is pretty much encompassing uh, solar cycle 
uh, solar cycle 5 this whole period just here encompasses the very very weak uh, solar cycle and solar cycle 5 and it uh, coincides with some very very cold uh, very cold winters certainly we have uh, January for instance eight, January 18 uh, 1799 coming out at 1.7 uh, 1800 2.8 1802 1.6 803 1.8 a milder one there, 1804, at 5.8, then 1805, we're back to 2.1. You get the idea, you go down this, uh, and we get a lot of very cold months, many, many of the months through this uh, very weak solar cycle, solar cycle 5, are really cold, uh, the Januarys, and indeed many of the Februarys as well. But the year uh, 1808 is quite interesting because although it is a cold year, January 2.6, February 2.8, March 3.2, very, very cold March, uh, we go along there. And it's interesting because we get to July and we see we get a central England temperature in July, uh, would you believe, of 18.4. Uh, that was a really hot July uh, in the midst of all of those other cold months through that uh, year of 1808 and it's, the year starts cold 2.6 in January, 2.8 in February, 3.2 in March it ends cold um, uh, 7.2 there 7.2 7 for October really really cold October December 2.2 very cold uh, December and that goes on into a cold, uh, another cold year uh, through 1809 which is just underneath but the point I'm trying to get at with this is that uh, despite the fact that overall uh, the weak solar cycle of solar cycle 5 does produce very cold months and particularly evident in winter it doesn't mean that you don't get some really uh, hot weather or you, it doesn't mean that you can't get some really hot weather and indeed that July of 1808 may have been uh, the hottest may have had the hottest temperatures uh, that we've ever recorded in the British Isles this is Trevor Harley's website his uh, personal website, I rate Trevor Harley's website very, very highly. I use it for my uh, historic videos. Um, I'm just going to tell you what Trevor Harley says about the uh, July of 1808. It's, he says uh, there was a memorable heat wave in the middle of the month, particularly affecting the east of the country. Uh, the spell included Hot Wednesday, uh, 13th of July 1808. Uh, might have been, been hotter than any day of the 20th century. Estimates suggest that it reached 100 Fahrenheit and may, might well have reached 40 Celsius. Yeah, that's right, you've heard it right. 40 Celsius could have been recorded on the 13th of July, uh, 1808. That's 105 Fahrenheit in places in southern England. There were many heat-related deaths. It was an extraordinary heat wave, concluded with intense thunderstorms on St. Swithin's Day. Uh, a fireball was noted travelling through Gloucester Cathedral and destroyed one of the pinnacles at the West End. Uh, the 15th was saw what was probably the most severe hailstorm to affect the southwest. Um, 95 kilometer sway was damaged between Bath and Bristol with 70 millimeter hailstones, touching perhaps 100 millimeters in places, causing great damage. Indeed, uh, some in Somerset were reported to have over a, to have uh, to be over a foot long, uh, 333 millimeters. It was a hot month overall at 18.4. We just saw there would not be one better until 1921. So it is possible. But in the middle of that uh, solar cycle 5, uh, which was incredibly weak, it was an incredibly weak solar cycle, uh, had an uh, overall sunspot number of about 40, just 40, uh, incredibly weak cycle. It could be, but within the midst of all of that, uh, a month after month after month being cold through the winter period in particular, we get this incredibly hot July, uh, July 1808, which may well have been the hottest uh, day ever recorded anywhere in uh, the British Isles. And it just goes to show you that these weak solar cycles, whilst they do favour colder conditions, particularly in winter, uh, it doesn't preclude the chance that you can get some really, really hot weather. I think that's what's happening uh, here. I think we're getting... Uh, despite the fact we're in a particularly uh, cold period generally uh, and have been since around let's say 2007 when the miserable summer started 2009 when the colder winter started um despite that we're getting this really uh, hot july or we've had this really hot july uh, and will it continue into august it may do it could do the uh, ecmdf uh, run tonight uh, when i'm doing this video on friday night is suggesting that we may get 
even hotter weather than we've had before uh, through the course of uh, the first weekend of August. So just just to show you, it doesn't uh, doesn't preclude um, hot uh, conditions occurring uh, in these wheat solar cycles. And the reason, of course, it's the blocking, isn't it? Because if we're on the cold side of block, and most of the time in the winter we're on the cold side of the block. Uh, can be on the mild side of block in winter, but even if we're on the mild side of the block, because there is a block there, it'll still tend to be cold through inversions. That's the difference in winter. Whereas in summer, if we're on the cold side of the block, uh, we get the atrocious sort of rain fest that we've had over the last few years. If we're on the warm side of the block, and we are and have been on the warm side of the block through July 2013, then we'll get it very, very hot. Um, it's like being in a continental climate basically in Russia they tend to get very hot summers and very cold winters and I think we are seeing more of a continental sort of idea to the weather uh, going on at just at the moment uh, because of this weak solar cycle so cycle 24 is uh, so weak uh, that uh, I think we are seeing a lot of sort of continental type influences on the weather which most of the time in winter will mean it's cold could be mild on occasion but most of the time it'll be cold in summer generally it's often very wet and cold or cool uh, but in winter uh, in summer it can also mean you're on the right side of a block uh, that is very very hot and that's what's going on uh, this month in my opinion just want to quickly scroll up uh, to show you some information from trevor harley's website i can't rate this uh, website highly enough i've told you before in the historic videos that he has in fact going all the way back to the middle ages actually has uh, in fact going all the way further back than that how about this one uh, while i'm on this page i'll just quickly highlight this here. i don't know if you're interested in it but uh, this is the first entry for july in history uh, from the year 16 uh, yeah, about 16 years after uh, the birth of Christ, um, a Roman fleet in the North Sea was dispersed by a storm. So you can basically say that Trevor Harley, in some instances on his uh, exceptionally amazing website, uh, in some instances he has information going more or less just 16 years away uh, back to the birth of Jesus Christ. An absolutely unbelievable website. Uh, can't rate it high enough. Do please check it out when you have the chance. It's a wonderful resource of information. Um, you can't beat it. And you can while away many happy hour at it. Uh, but in summary, just to sum up uh, this video, uh, well, it looks as though uh, we may well have had the double peak of cycle 24. I spoke about the double peak in the first video. Looks as though we've probably had it. Um, we may well now be on a downward spiral into solar minimum. Of course, we could pick up again. Maybe we'll have triple peak. It's a very unusual solar cycle. This one, it's very hard to predict what it's going to do. So I wouldn't rule out the fact we might have a third peak uh, going uh, forward sometime uh, through the latter stages of 2013 or even into 2014. It's a very, very unusual cycle. But overall, it's a really, really weak solar cycle, which, as I've explained, does seem to coincide with blocking, uh, particularly in winter. Uh, also in summer, in winter, it generally means that it's going to be quite cold very often. Not always can be milder even in these weak solar cycles but it favours uh, colder winters with the blocking in summer though it uh, can also get very very hot if we're on the hot side of block that's what's happened I think in July 2013 it could go on into uh, August but the thing with these weak solar cycles is that very often they can flip through the summer um, so unlike in the 1990s where we had very strong solar activity and we have many hot months through the 1990s it could be that this July uh, is very much a one-off and we may flip into uh, a much cooler regime again in August or maybe not maybe we'll continue to be on the hot side of the block uh, through August and we'll have another really warm month We'll have to wait and see uh, what happens. Hope you found the video interesting. I'll be doing more on the solar cycles as we go forward. It's going to become apparent very soon, I think, uh, whether we're going to get a third peak or whether we're going to start to slide away into solar minimum. And we have what will probably eventually be confirmed as the actual peak of the solar cycle in uh, 2011, in, at the end of 2000, uh, 2011. It'll all become very apparent soon. Uh, what's going on um, so yeah there'll be more videos coming up on the solar cycle 24 and of course uh, the implications uh, for solar cycle 24 25 if it's as weak as is currently uh, being predicted 
that's it for now. Hope you found the video interesting. Bye for now.